Kia ora, hello. This week, we are starting our new series discussing the very basics of how to sew. This is to supplement our Medieval Sewing Made Easy series to help those who are starting their journey in the world of sewing. In this series, you'll get to spend your time with me. How exciting. Never fear, while my sewing pedigree may not be as extensive, I've slung a needle or two in my time. This episode, we will discuss the minimum tools and their uses to get you sewing your first project like a pro in no time. First, let's talk rulers and measuring. You'll need a good ruler for pattern making and one is helpful while sewing. You'll need to start with at least 30 centimeters or a foot long. I also suggest you get yourself a nice one meter or yard long ruler as well down the line for longer measurements. Make sure the ruler you get is marked out with something that has smaller increments for finer measurements. Next, we look at the seamstress measuring tape. This is super important to help you in measuring curves and getting accurate measurements around body parts. Once you start using them, you'll never go back. There is a bit of a trick, however, in their use. I'll do my best to show you how with one hand. As you can see, I hold it against my body and wrap it around the wrist, which is what I want to measure. I use the front of the tab to mark it off against the measurement on the tape. And as you can see here, I am rapidly losing bulk since I am no longer working out as I am trapped in the house due to quarantine. Let's see how that dates our video, eh? Let's talk about marking our fabric. There are several options available. We like to use Taylor's chalk. You can use blackboard chalk. However, Taylor's chalk does not rub off while you're working and it does not stain the fabric. While blackboard chalk will wear off fast and you will have to reapply it frequently. Usually it has three colors for better contrast against different colored fabrics. The other option is the Conti pencil. Once you have marked up, you can cut around the line. These are a bit expensive, but leave a longer lasting mark, you should be able to buy them from an art supply store. We usually have a white and tan colored one laying around. Now, whatever you do, please do not use a pen. This will be your downfall. Ink is terrible and impossible to get out. Next, we'll have a look at scissors. Scissors are going to set you back the most. Yes, you can use normal household scissors, but not all scissors were created equal. Fabric scissors are created in a certain way to cut fabric. Let's look at that. As you can see, the bottom blade of the scissors are pointed. This allows the scissors to slide under the fabric while cutting, while the upper blade has a wider and heavier blade with a blunter end. These act as a shear to cut down on the fabric and slice the fibers. Now, remember when your mother used to get angry at you for cutting paper with a good scissors? This is because these are made to cut fabric. The bevel on the blade is such that cutting anything that is not fabric dulls the blades. So instead of the fibers being cut cleanly apart, they are torn resulting in ragged edges in a cut. Bad news. Next, we have snips. These are not just little scissors. They are used to snip threads and small bits of fabric off your work. They are very handy to have around as they are small so they can quickly snip off a thread or help unpick a seam without needing to use the bulky scissors. We'll have a quick look at the thimble next. Some people use them, I don't, but they can be very helpful to stop your fingers getting stabbed, especially when you sew thicker fabrics. You place it on your finger and allows you to push on the back of the needle without getting the needle jabbing in your hand. Those things can be quite sharp. Speaking of sewing needles, let's have a look at those. Not all needles are the same. They come in a variety of sizes for a variety of jobs. Larger needles are suitable for certain jobs. As you can see, this large needle has a large hole which is helpful when using thicker threads such as linen cord and wool. These longer thick needles are usually used when doing work such as darning, leather work, embroidery, tapestry, 
or cross stitch and quilting. The thickness and length allows you to pierce thicker materials without breaking the needle. Smaller needles are better for smaller, finer work. The length of the needle gives you finer control to run smaller stitches, unlike the larger needles. The smaller eye allows you to run a finer thread such as silk, cotton, and thinner linen. You would not run a silk thread through the larger needle unless it was doubled or triple ply, as it would pull through the hole the needle left while you were sewing. There is a compromise, however. As you sew, you might want some length on your needle, but still have a finer needle as well. There is always something in between. This is the in-between. This will give you some fine control and also allow you space to run a stitch up the needle, which is helpful when doing running stitch. Next up, we have pins. I'll oh, get pins. I tend to use these pearl headed pins. I hate cheap brass pins. That's just me. A pin should be sharp and not rusty. If it's blunt and rusty, throw it out. Get lots of pins. Pins will hold your seams together while you sew and you'll not get crooked hems. They hold patterns down while cutting and marking. They help adjust fit on a garment. Get pins. As an option, you can use awls. They are helpful with a lot of tasks. I use them when I am making eyelets. Check out our making eyelets video. They help separate fibers without having to cut. They also are great to help undo wanted knots. You also can use them to stuff in the end of a tricky seam and folds as you finish off a garment and then you just sew around the end. What we have next is one of the most amazing tools anyone can have in their sewing kits, the quick unpick. This tool gets a thumbs up from me. So you will see at the top is a small blade and ball. The blade slips under any stitching and cuts the thread while the ball is used to safely lift any thread. Once you get inside a seam, you slip the blade along the seam you want to unpick and cut the thread. This done neatly does not damage the fabric and you have saved yourself significant work and time. Yes, you will need to unpick seams. It's okay. We even unpick seams. Everyone does. Now, if you do not have any sewing equipment at home and you have to start with nothing, you have to start somewhere, right? Let's say the sewing buck struck you and you wanted to start sewing. Do you need all of this? No. Let's look at the bare bone sewing kit you would need to buy. Let's remove all these items you could do without and see the bare minimum to begin to sew. Here we go. The very basic are a Conti pencil, a tape measure, pins, scissors, some needles of various sizes, obviously your thread and fabric as well. You would be able to mark a pattern, measure, cut out, sew with these items. The rest just makes your life easier. Well, there you have it. The first video in our Medieval Sewing Made Super Easy series. We'll be releasing a series of topics in addition to our Medieval Sewing Made Easy series. Don't miss out on those as well if you are interested in how to sew. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Means you must have enjoyed the video. So like, comment and subscribe. And remember, stay safe, have fun, and keep reenacting.